Hello everyone, welcome back to the Rustage Anime Podcast, the anime place where we talk about anime and things. Uh, I'm your number one host of the Rustage Anime Podcast, Daniel Rustage, otherwise known as Just Rustage. I'm joined by my co-host, the my editor and the man that I pay to be my friend, Evan. He's paying me enough finally to do that. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Character <laughs> uh, On this episode, we have a special uh, guest, um, Mr... Mr. Briggs, <laughs> Mr. The the fucking f- f- fucking forgot the name of your channel for a hot second. <laughs> um, it's all day anime. All day anime. For some reason, I was thinking of. I thought it was called the anime day. I was yeah, like, anime, yeah, anime I'm so used to here. calling What's you up? Briggs. Like when I legitimately when I look up your YouTube channel, I look up Briggs anime. <laughs> yeah. Well, f- to be honest, you probably have more interaction with me on Twitter and, and on Discord on and, and Twitch, Twitch and stuff, which yeah. are all Briggs, right? That's not to say I, I don't watch your videos. I those all more personal, and then YouTube more, like, yeah. company-esque. I get that. I understand. All right. Well, here's yeah. uh, well, this is Hello, everybody. What's up, Chad lads? That was probably the best podcast intro I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> was it? Wow. I, 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 I feel like you were being sarcastic, Mr. Briggs. No, but, never. Um, <laughs> we're here. I've maybe slept, like, an hour. Uh, Evan's just woken up. Briggs here is right as a ripe berry. Um, oh yeah, I've been I've just been sleeping for days. Yeah, he's he's actually been he's woken up from a coma recently, and so he's refreshed and he doesn't realize that One Piece is past Ina's lobby yet. Uh, what it is? <laughs> yes, <What? laughs> I got I got some shocking things to tell you. Uh, oh my god! On this episode, it's going to be a two-parter. So this week will be the first week, and the second week will be the second week, as weeks tend to be as weeks yeah <laughs> yeah uh we're gonna be uh going over each individual arc in one piece and giving them a rank out of 10 and talking about them saying why we like them saying why we dislike them and i thought i'd have Briggs here because i talked to Briggs about one piece because he's he's a big one piece fan like i am yeah i'm the one piece guy he's the he's he's the one piece guy the number one one piece guy if one you, and only if you ever no, the wondered, only One Piece guy. If you look in the Guinness Book of World Record for One Piece guys, Briggs is there, number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we just fucking get started? Easy. Let's just jump right into it. Well, oh, the actually the other thing I uh, I wanted to mention was we're obviously not doing fillers, and the second thing is some of them, some of the arcs are slightly different between manga and anime, especially like near the beginning, especially the first arc, uh, which is Romance Dawn, because. In the anime, it starts on Alveda's ship, but in the manga, it starts with Luffy's flashback. I think I'm just going to go off the manga for everything, because yeah. it's more fresh in my head. I, I, I was going to go off the manga for everything. Um, so I'm the only anime only here. All right, I see how it is. Evan, I think it'll be an interesting perspective. The thing is, Evan actually never learned how to read, so that's why he <laughs> yeah. only watches dubbed anime. Wait, whoa, wow. Okay, first of all, I watched One Piece in the uh, Japanese dub, all right? That's so, only because they haven't, the dub hasn't caught it up yet. If, the, <laughs> if they had the full dub for One Piece, you would have watched the whole thing in dub. I, I would. I honestly would. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the first arc is Romance Dawn, which is where you get introduced to the big boy Shanks and the start of Luffy's journey, which um, I think... There, there is a debate to be had on whether or not the anime or the manga did it better because uh, some people say that starting out immediately with a character's backstory is not always the best thing to do because you want to have you want to have like a um, a nice intro to the character like oh this is what they're like this is what they do and then you learn about their backstory instead of starting with the backstory of a character you don't know anything about yet um I, I'm interested see, to hear what you guys' thoughts on that. I would absolutely agree in like the, the sense that you would want to see the character who's going to be like the protagonist mm-hmm. of your story, and then you figure out why they are that way with the the backstory that gives like development to that a little bit later on. It doesn't have to be like, a lot later on. So I think the anime could have done it better. The problem is Alvita's ship kind of sucks. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> well, that's the other key thing is that in the anime it's a ship, but in the manga it's an island. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you. I just... literally just read it. I forgot that already. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, and the uh, the third thing is in the manga, Nami isn't there, but in the uh, anime, Nami is there. In the first episode, Nami's there. They introduce Nami's character straight away because uh, yeah. well, she's. They robbing... don't like say her name or anything no. like that, but we do but see, see her kind of in the background. You see, yeah, yeah. You, you, they set up the characters. I maybe a little bit better. Uh, 
because, yeah, you see her robbing. You see that she's stealing. She's stealing from both the pirates and like the regular ship. So it's like you're already setting up this Nami as this sort of morally gray thief from episode one, even though, uh, and you don't get that in the manga until a lot later. So you could argue that that's better in the anime or not. Uh, I think you want to start off an anime to catch people's attention and you want it to be epic. And in this case, the backstory was definitely more epic than the introduction. Yeah, you think with so? With Alvita's yeah, crew. Yeah. yeah. So like, well, Shanks, is, his introduction was sick. I loved, um, I just loved the, like, the entire backstory. You see Luffy and his, like, it almost sets up his story better than the actual introduction. You find out why he wants to be a pirate. Mm-hmm. Um, you see him that he looks up to Shanks. You get the whole bandit scene. You see Shanks lose his arm. You see Luffy get his straw hat. It does a great job to set it up. And I think it's a lot more entertaining than the Alveda one. It, it, so it, I'm actually cool with it. It is really cool. But I also like the fact that in the anime version, you see Luffy's rubber powers straight away. Like, And mm, you're like, true. whoa, this is something cool that he does. And then you learn find why he why. has that. <laughs> instead of Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, either way, they're both really good. Uh, Romance Dawn not only includes them fighting against Alvida, but it also includes the introduction of Zoro, which is a big sort of deal. Oh, yeah. And the fight oh, against the, Captain The introduction Morgan. of Kobe as well. Your boy. Oh, yeah, Kobe, yeah. my favorite character. But at this point, not really. Later. He yes. gets he gets his... I'll talk about him later. Maybe I'll do a whole podcast episode about why Kobe is my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, you get like shown all the characters, or at least some of the characters, obviously, but like... You it's done in a, w- a great way, I feel. One, one of the key things that I liked about Romance Dawn is it sets up the sort of morality of the world. And I'm sorry if we get weirdly deep, but you you start off, but taking out the backstory, you start off showcasing that some pirates are evil, like Alvida, and, you know, Luffy kicks their butt. And then the second part is you it shows off that some marines are evil, and then Luffy kicks their butt, right? And it, immediately in the first arc, it is already showing you that in every walk of life in this world, every person has a capacity to be evil. Evil, yeah. And I think that's like immediately really good for world building. It's not like these are the evil guys, these are the good guys. It's great to be a pirate or it's bad to be a pirate. It's like immediately you know that the, the, the fundamental differences between pirates and marines are nothing to do with being good or evil. It's to do with yeah, other it, things. And the it's fact not that, your occupation, it comes down to an individual yeah, level. And, and the fact that marines can be evil and good, you see there's good marines, and pirates can be evil and good. And I think that's, yeah, well, it's really effective to start the story that way. And I think a lot of people overlook that fact when they're like just reading it for the first time or rereading it or whatever. Hundred percent. You see Shanks. You see as a good pirate. You see terrible bandits. You see Alvida as a terrible pirate. Mm-hmm. You see uh, Axe Hand Morgan as, as a, a terrible ter- marine. But the people under him, some of them are actually like good natured. Yeah, exactly. And you see Kobe, and you you hear about Kobe's dreams that run parallel into Luffy's dreams, which mm-hmm. we'll touch on later because he's. I love the fact that he has that sort of development throughout the series. Um, all right, we haven't let Evan talk at all. All right, <laughs> <What's> Evan. <up? laughs> well, you guys are over here comparing like the manga and the anime, and uh, I have no manga knowledge. But uh, honestly, like the reason I like Romance Dawn is because, like, for me, when I first started watching the anime, it was just like, oh, this is this is new, and I agree with a lot of things that uh, Daniel said. It was the fact that, like, you know, usually you get told, oh, pirates are bad people, right? And you know, this is, like, for me, I guess when I started watching it, it was probably, like, around the era of, like, Pirates of the Caribbean. But even in that movie, I got to see, oh, pirate, pirates are bad, right? <laughs> As opposed to, like, in One Piece where it's like, wait a minute, these pirates are actually kind of good. And then, obviously, yeah, there were the other characters that were actually just bad and the Marines who were bad and good. So uh, it was just different for me. And I, I found that interesting. And that's why I liked it and continued to watch the show. It. It also sets up a theme with Zoro because Zoro immediately doesn't want to join uh, Luffy's crew because he hates pirates. Yeah, but that's like a also a theme throughout a lot of the people that joined Luffy's crew. They all don't like pirates at first before meeting Luffy because you think about n- when he talks to Nami in- later. Nami's all like, "I don't, I hate pirates," and Usopp's also. I swear, Usopp says something about not liking pirates because his dad abandoned him or something. Um. um. You get mixed. You get mixed. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, things from Usopp because he wants to be a brave warrior of the sea, and he's proud of his dad, but he also has like obviously some resentment or something within him that's like, wow, he still left us to be yeah, a pirate. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, a lot of them have mixed because then I, I realized Chopper likes pirates, and then 
it sort of varies throughout the series. But the key thing is like Zoro and Nami, they don't like pirates straight away in, yeah. in Romance Dawn. And you, yeah. you see that small bit of character development just immediately from them. Anyway, we got to get through them quicker or else this is going to be like five hours long. Uh, give her, What's your rating for Romance Dawn? Out of 10. Um, I'll give it an 8. Yeah. yeah, I think a good a good eight is fine. I, I would have actually given it like a seven. Um, I think it does a really good way of, a, a, a good job of a, like setting up the story and such, but I always feel like the start of Shonen stuff is never that great anyway. Like mm-hmm. it, even if it does everything it needs to do, it's never what people are there for. And yeah. Yeah, Fair whatever. Enough. Orange Town, let's go. Orange Town, introduction, introduction of the best character, which is Buggy the Clown. <laughs> PK Bobby uh, Buggy. Oh my god. I but Bobby. <laughs> Bobby the PK Crown. Bobby BB. I will always be Bobby the Crown. <laughs> um Buggy the Clown's great because before we talk about Nami, because she gets properly introduced in this arc, Buggy the Clown's great because he introduces uh other devil fruits, firstly, so Luffy's not unique. The fact the Grand Line exists, plus he has a story that's tied to Shanks that you're immediately like hooked into. So you're interested in this character. Um, and he, he sort of poses the first real threat uh, in a way. Um, but it, it also starts the cycle, not the cycle, but it starts the trend of Zoro being wounded or in some way, because it, it's clear at the beginning of the show, like at the very beginning of the show, Zoro might be stronger than Luffy. I don't know, it's debatable. Like at the very start. I definitely mm. feel at the start he was 100% stronger than Luffy. Right? I and I don't know about that, the uh, I, voice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cuz <'Cause>, cuz <'cause laughs> I know where you're where you're coming from. Like Luffy at the beginning like uh, he still takes out everyone pretty much, but um he's a lot more uh, I so one of the reasons like I like I like Orange Town. You really get to see who these guys are as people, not so much. You don't see it as much in Romance Dawn. You realize that Luffy's an absolute idiot that's yeah. over trusting and lets himself get caught, but also he is uh, maybe a little bit overconfident in his abilities, and that's why he lets himself be captured so easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. I, I, I just I wanted to make a point about Zoro because it seemed like in the these first few arcs, Zoro is purposely some like something happens to Zoro in the story, which means he can't fight to the fullest of his ability. Like he gets stabbed in the side by an ability he doesn't have any idea about in in the uh, Orange Town. He goes in the completely wrong direction in Syrup Village. Uh, yeah. In the Baratier art, he obviously has that b- bout with Mihawk because I feel like Zoro could have taken down Don Krieg, right? Obviously. So they had to, for story reasons, they had to take him out so that Luffy could have the fight with Don Krieg. Uh, yeah. And it would be a bit more of a struggle than if both of, if both of them Although, teamed up, it would have been easy, right? I, I think he could have taken out Don Krieg, but I think it still would have been difficult because Zoro at the time cannot cut through steel. And yeah, yeah, but but Krieg's armor Zoro and Luffy fighting together would have no struggle taking down oh, yeah. Don Krieg, yeah. which is why. <laughs> Although I, I, they usually don't double team opponents. Yeah, well, and and that's kind of because he's always not there he's to always, do yeah. so. <laughs> fair, <laughs> like fair if, enough, if you think enough. about it, Luffy and Luffy and Zoro rarely actually fight the same opponent at the same time because they're either in completely different parts of the building, like in Ina's lobby, or Zoro's like injured. <laughs> Yeah, fair um, enough. Because I think Oda knows that it wouldn't be that interesting to watch if it was because they would just fucking win. <laughs> I mean, na- now it would be hype. Now, like, now it would be hype, and I feel like, like Wano in, in Wano they're probably going to do it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like, did you watch? Did you, read, did you read the newest chapter? I did, no but spoiler, Evan hasn't. I obviously Dude, haven't. I Evan watches the, the <laughs> fucking anime. <laughs> so what's wrong with watching anime? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You're just not. Fuck you. Anyway, <laughs> you get panel. you get introduced. <laughs> to Nami here and uh, she kind of semi joins the crew at this point right yeah semi joins the crew we hear a little bit about her backstory but not much you just yeah. know that she uh, she only steals from pirates she wouldn't steal from normal people she hates pirates mm-hmm. and she wants to get enough money to buy back a certain village and that's it which at is this point okay so that's a really good point because and I'm sorry I weirdly go in in depth but in the manga, that, entire, that entirely makes sense. But in the anime, in the first episode, they show her stealing from not pirates. They show her stealing. Did she really? Yeah, she stole from... Um, she was sneaking around just that ferry ship that Alvida uh, boarded. And she was stealing mm. shit from there. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, 
that's kind of interesting. That unless she was stealing from Alvida. Um, I mean, she wasn't. I'm just going to well. give it the benefit of the the benefit of the doubt because yeah, yeah, I, I have to go back and watch it because I feel like that's a decision they made without realizing that it would affect it exactly. because obviously that's not from Oda's. Oda didn't write that in. That's something the anime people did. Because the, they wanted to introduce introduce Nami, yeah, exactly. show her a little bit, yeah. which was cool, but they may have messed up in that regard. Yeah, and, that, um, and that's not. There was, there was some underrated funny moments in Orange Town. It's not my favorite arc by far, but there's like uh, Luffy lands and Nami's like, "This is my boss," and like the, the people chasing him, and then like like it's like he completely uses him as bait, and then Luffy like kicks their asses, and then doesn't even doubt like. Like, he, like Luffy's just so innocent and naive. I fucking love it. <laughs> it's good. Like you, this person just set you up in a trap and you didn't even like realize, or you're just so strong that you just don't care. Yeah, I I feel like it. Orange Town does a really good job, as you were saying before, of like setting up Luffy's character as mm-hmm. this sort of naive uh, adventurer. And yeah. if if anything, more so than Romance Dawn, because Romance yes. Dawn obviously we get him as a kid, but we realize he has a very, very, pretty much the same mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> still on. a kid, in a way. I mean, they oh, didn't yeah. have fucking schools on that island. He probably doesn't even know maths. I bet he doesn't <laughs> <I> know mean, <laughs> chemistry. <laughs> Me and Tekking always talk about the fact Luffy. that we're not sure if he could read or not. He probably Every can't. About newspapers and bounties, and the one time he did read a number, like we're he, like, oh, he, he read it wrong. <laughs> He read yeah. it wrong, but there has been times where he's read it right, but then we don't know if he's just repeating what other people said. Oh, I've, we've got it into it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually don't think he, he is educated in any way, shape, or form. I bet he doesn't even... mystery. I bet he doesn't even know how to fill out a CV. He doesn't need to. He's already had a job. <laughs> yeah. um, All right. What's your rating for Orange Town? Mm, I'd probably give it like a seven. To yeah, six point five. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on the six to seven. I, I I'll give, I'm gonna seven. be optimistic and give it a seven. There's no arcs gonna be lower than seven. <laughs> it's, no, one it's one piece. It's one piece. Syrup villages. Uh, I like Syrup Village more than I like Orange Town. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna give six to Orange Town as we move on to Syrup Village. I literally have the list in front of me, and I'm basing all my rankings by what's like next to it. Because like Romance Dawn, I was thinking. Seven, I'm like, but then Orange Town and Syrup Village would be like a five and six. So I gotta, I gotta rank this accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Syrup Village. You get introduced to Usopp, who's my favorite character. Uh, in uh, my favorite Straw Hat. I mean, he has the best mm-hmm. development throughout the series. Sniper Gang. And we'll get to that later. Um, I like it because so you know how I was talking about how the previous arcs were showcasing that you could have villains, uh, that were in the navy and villains that in the pirates and they were setting up the different types of villains in this arc they set up that not every villain is just a guy that luffy beats up it this sometimes the villains are smart and mischievous and can uh even though like his plan isn't super in depth or that great uh that's mostly because you know he's not at the level of like the intellect of pirates that you'll find later in the series it it does a good way of introducing the fact that there are Pirates. There are pirates that are like pretty smart and have yeah. like plans. Yeah, they have other ways around completing their objectives instead of just yeah. running in and pillaging like Buggy did yeah. or Alvida did. And you also see like a different perspective. Like they kind of paint pirates to be these amazing things, not amazing people, but something that like is so much fun and like it's like a great <laughs> adventure. But then you get this perspective of this guy. It's like being a pirate sucks. You're being constantly chased by bounty hunters oh, yeah, and yeah, marines yeah. and like. The spoils are good, but like half the time you're chasing empty treasures and blah, blah, blah. I think, like, like, honestly, the East Blue kind of had two objectives, which was one was to get all of the uh, Straw Hat crew together, like the main core. And then the secondary was to set up the the core principles of the world. And each of these different arcs feels like it sets up a different piece of that puzzle before they go into the ground line. Mm -hmm. And I I, I like Syrup Village for that. And I like Django. What can I say? <laughs> he he's cool. What what more what more to say? He's a hypno guy. Yeah. Um, I I can understand people's gripes with with it, and also Usopp is not the greatest character in. He's Sir definitely Village. not likable. But that's, that's kind of art. why it. He's not he's like a different. He, how, sorry, sorry. Let me just cut you off real quick. Like 
it's a different person being introduced. You get this absolute beast that's naive Luffy. You get Zoro, who is an absolute badass and super strong. You have Nami, the navigator, who's still very confident and like, um, like her capabilities of stealing. And she's like, she's pretty capable. And then we get Usopp, kind of a coward, someone who's like, yeah, liar. Oda does a great job making every character very, very different with different ambitions yeah, and also starting off at a different point. 100%. Like, because he's obviously way behind the rest of them in terms of skill level. But, and also, he's not entirely likable. And you, you, you obviously, there's, there's things there that show that he's likable in some regards. But the fact that he has a lot of flaws at the beginning is really important to his story throughout the series, right? That's true. You see characters like Zoro and such who are relatively well put together like they have small uh developments but it's more developments on their technique than their character throughout the series uh but Usopp is he's incredibly flawed at the beginning um and I but he needs the be. normal guy yeah I always say that Usopp's the normal dude that's thrown into a mix of these like wacky badass pirates yeah and like he's the guy that we probably relate to and seeing him like grow as a person and mm-hmm. become more like confident and capable yeah, and plus we get the going merry in this arc, so mm-hmm. and that's good. That's true. I don't know. I, one of the best the characters in the I show. I don't love Syrup Village is because it's relatively long compared to the previous two arcs. Yeah, and and then not much not happens. As, like it, not that much happens. Like I you wouldn't c- say it's more or less hype than Orange Town for me, but b- b- the fact that it's longer and still around the same, I always end up giving it a little bit of a you lower You probably rating. could, like, shorten Syrup Village and it would be better. Could. So I Yeah, I understand. I probably would still give it a 6 out of 10. I just... Yeah, I'm, I'm giving it a 6 as well. Cool. Baratier. Evan. Evan has to vote. I, I, oh, I, sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry, I, I, Evan. I, it's fine. I, I, I probably would give that arc a, another 7. Like, as, as much as you guys might not like it, I, there's still arcs for me that are worse. So yeah, seven's fine. Okay. I think Sierra Village is my second least favorite arc in all the really? Ooh, yeah, wow. I, well, okay. and that but that's like saying because a lot of the arcs are so good, it's not like it's oh, exactly. Bad. Like <laughs> this is a six out of ten compared to all the other arcs, and it's still solid. Yeah. The reason why, a lot of people drop One Piece on Sierra Village because of its length. Yeah, and, like, that's fair. It's just okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I got to give it a low rating. Okay, Baratier. This is my Ooh, one of my favorite arcs. Baratier is sick. The, so uh, Sanji is my favorite straw hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's my favorite as well. <laughs> I'm just going to come out and say this. I'm giving this at least a 9 out of 10 here. Same. <laughs> but but Rossier, uh Sanji used to be my favorite straw hat when I was younger and more naive. Uh, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, like in terms of like the character that I think is like the most cool, um, I it's it's always been Sanji for me. Uh, but I, I guess I just like... Usopp's progression and um the the entire arc's really cool you get a good introduction to Sanji as a character uh there's like funny moments between Luffy and and the crew and the pirate and the um the chef crew and uh you get a I think again setting up different villains that are from different walks of life you get a villain you've heard about the Grand Line and now you get a villain who's been there right and yeah so we at least get to find out that it's a real place yeah and you get to hear yeah. stories about it and it it sets it like foreshadows and sets up that grand line as this mysterious place uh, and a freaking pirate graveyard they almost overhyped it in a uh, way like they did an yeah. amazing job hyping it up to be this terrible scary place and then luffy being the innocent guy that he is is like I can't wait to go there on a yeah. great adventure. And then you've got Usopp being the normal guy. All like, he's like, yeah, I'm excited too. Oh, His knees are shaking. <laughs> you, in Barate, you get so many amazing, like, I don't, it's so underrated in my opinion. Yeah, um, you think so? You get Zoro versus Mihawk. Okay, So Obviously. early in the story. I mean, that's an amazing is, thing. You saw Dr. S- the, the author of Dr. Stone do the redrawing of that. I haven't. Oh, that's really cool. I haven't cool. seen that. That actually sounds like I have to. Me. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. And then you get this like, like we all knew that Zoro had no chance, but, but that's you, amazing. you have Mihawk setting kind of like a standard for what's to come in the Grand Line as well. You get Don Krieg getting destroyed from the Grand Line, but you get Mihawk setting a standard for like, this is what we need to see Luffy and Zoro get to at one oh, point. A hundred percent. And actually the, in, the inclusion of Mihawk being a warlord uh, pretty much helps 
create uh, make Crocodile a more scary character later on in the story. Yeah, because if that. you didn't have Mihawk there, fuck Zoro up in Baratie, and you're like, he's one of the warlords of the sea, then when Crocodile was introduced as a warlord of the sea, it would have way less weight. But because yeah, we had Mihawk... Know, like what strength to expect Yeah, from exactly, the right? But because we had Mihawk, we, you're able to sort of... It's, I just, it's incredibly smart. Um, and Mihawk is a lot of people's favorite characters. He's still incredibly strong, even to like present-day One Piece. They... People, so I always, I always have so much fun asking people, where would you rank Mihawk in regards to strength, like yeah, compared you really to other know. powers? You don't know because you know he's but not the thing that's Yonko crazy level. is like you know that he tied against Shanks so many times, like they like they're like fifty fifty in battles or something like that, and then now that Shanks lost his arm, he doesn't even think he's like worthwhile to fight him, or he wouldn't get any gratitude at defeating him if he could defeat him. Mm. So it's like. Where do I rank him? I always rank him between an admiral and like a Yonko, and like just because he doesn't have like the resources a Yonko does. Yeah, I so don't I know. know. He's he's up there. He's the strongest swordsman. He, People, he, I feel like underestimate him a bit. He is definitely the strongest swordsman. Uh, this is true. <laughs> but I, I also his sort of nonchalant attitude towards you don't really know what his ideology is. But I think the mm-hmm. fact that he kind of just chills. He he could do so much with the power that he has, but I think he's so into just being a swordsman and re- like the respect for that art. Um, mm-hmm. Again, we don't see a lot of his story or his backstory or whatever. I think it would have been really cool if he was a bounty hunter. Yeah. And, like he was actually just oh, if he was also down, a like, bounty hunter, that would actually badass be really cool. that, that would be cool, yeah. But I almost feel like, why would he want to be a bounty hunter? He just seems to True. like, he just wants to kind of chill. And be the best. And be the best, right? And... Um, I think Back to Barate real quick. I just yeah. want to say, in this arc, we find out, we see Luffy, we learn more about Luffy his, and his fighting style. Oh, Like, yeah. he has no fear whatsoever, and we really do learn that in this arc. And um, you get Zeph, um, well, we get Sanji's backstory too, which is amazing, but we can get oh, yeah, into that yeah. in a second. We get um, Zeph say, like, this is the type of man, like, like, Sanji, don't take your eyes off this fight. Win or lose, it's going to be an amazing battle. And Luffy's the last type of guy you would ever want to fight because he has no fear. And I love that so much. Because imagine fighting, like most people think when they fight, like they get hit, they, you think before you hit back. If, you're, if you see someone with these deadly weapons, you're scared to a certain degree and you try to outsmart it. Yes. Luffy, does it, like he's tactical sometimes, but very rarely. And a lot of times it's just him taking things head on because he's not scared of like nothing. And when you fight someone like that, it must be fucking insane to fight someone like that, honestly. And I feel like that, that attitude like... Um bites him in the butt later on in the series but at the moment oh, it's sure. like the driving force for him one thing i wanted to mention about baratier is gin 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 i don't character know. that betrays the chef uh kind of he just he has such a really good mini arc and it almost felt like it's just something extra that makes the arc really nice that it almost like it didn't even need to be there but it's the arc's a lot stronger because it's there like, Oda didn't need to do that. He has this whole yep. arc with Gin who spares Sanji's life because uh, Sanji fed him and stuff. And um, yeah, he has just this mini arc that happens in the middle of Baratie, uh that I think is really effective and just makes the entire story stronger. Um, yeah, but, um, I also <laughs> want to say in... Well, you guys want to talk about Sanji's backstory for sure. I'm right. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. This is one of the first times we get a proper backstory for a character that for a like, character. fully flushes him out in mm-hmm. yeah. the story. We, um, we, go we, ahead. We had gotten Zoro's backstory at this point, right? I Yeah, but Zoro's sucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> fair. It definitely wasn't as interesting as Sanji's. Did we get it mid Syrup Village or did we get it Orange Town? I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't even remember, but Sanji's one is definitely super impactful. Oh, yeah. And it has that shock value to it as well. And it completely set up his character for who he is, right? Like, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's amazing. And also, I wanted to say in regards to Luffy's fighting real quick before like we move on and all that, um, we like because I said that he's a guy without without fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we get to see that directly in his fights when he runs right through those spears that hit him in the legs and stuff in order to get closer to Don Krieg. Oh, yeah. And then and Krieg sh- puts up his shield of spikes, and Luffy's just like, well, I'm going to fucking punch through it. Like, no other person would do that. That that panel where he punches straight through the the spikes is incredible. Gives me chills every single time. Uh, what is your ranking for Baratier gamers? 
I'm I'd giving it a nine. A solid nine. I actually. I'm giving it a nine point two. Wow. Nine point two. <laughs> I actually have it as an eight. Uh, but that's still high. Fair enough. Still good. Fair enough. No, I There's just too many it. great moments between yeah. Sanji's backstory, Mihawk versus Zoro. I very much enjoyed Luffy versus Don Krieg. It, we it, get, it, like, it definitely like so good. amps up, right? This is where One Piece, you, oh. a lot of people say, you know, you got to read until Baratier slash Arlong Park, right? 100%. Speaking of Arlong Park. I think it's good before that, but like, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. when it really picks up. Arlong Park time. Hell yeah. Arlong Park's great. Because, I mean, there's so many reasons why it's great. But I want to f- say, firstly, you get introduced to the fishermen. So, just a completely different aspect of... Um, yeah, we, we find out the there's, world. like, more yeah, races different, in the Yeah, different world. races that exist. <laughs> um, Bless you. And also, Baratier beautifully transitions into our long part. Oh, yeah, you get because... Nami leaving and abandoning the crew. And you get this panel of Nami literally crying. Like, she's kind of forced back to where she's going. Mm-hmm. And, like, I hope you see, I see these guys again sometime in the future. Uh, it's really Dude, good. Dude, I actually, I cried on stream when I read you that. You cried on stream? Yeah. Oh, dude. Damn. Did someone clip or it? I, te- I teared up. <laughs> <Did> someone <laughs> you just want to find a clip. Can I, can I use it as a reaction gif? No, it's deleted. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, okay. So we go into Arlong Park, and I'm, there's a lot of good scenes. I don't know where to start. Firstly, I, I, oh, wait, Evan, go. I think, yeah, no, I, th- I think for me, what, why, what I really liked about Arlong Park is the fact that, like, I, personally for me, when I was watching the anime, I felt like this was, like, Luffy's first, like, time being, like, actually, like, really serious about something. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously... He, he was serious about like a bunch of other things before but like i mean like this is the first like motivating factor for him was that like hey this is my friend and i don't know what's going on right now but like i want to like help my friend out and, and it, mm-hmm. it starts the chain of luffy putting his straw hat on his crewmates in a sort of yeah. protecting manner yeah yeah mm-hmm. well yeah you get it you get an orange town you see that luffy's like don't touch my treasure this yeah, is my yeah, hat yeah. and then at this point Nami's his friend and he trusts her with it, puts it on her, and you really see her him angry for the first time, like Evan said, because and you you get to see how much he truly cares about his Nakama. A hundred percent. I didn't expect you to say Nakama. I did I didn't expect yeah. you to pull out that word either. Yeah. Um, One piece ain't no laugh matter voice. <laughs> <laughs> you get in Nami's backstory, you like discover the reason why she's been doing all of this. Uh, thievery and criminal activity which I think is so good and so effective and I only have one issue with it uh, and it's my one issue with Nami's character is so N- Nami's like greedy because she wants to get money so that she can free her village right then so it's not really that greedy right it's not that greedy right then why after she frees her village is she still, She's still greedy the same person yeah. right well so my argument for this is kind of like what you do at a young age and what you do for most of your life shapes who you are. So she valued money and the importance of money. And Bellamere, her um, her adopted mother or stepmother or however it works, um, yeah, um, died because she didn't have enough money. Mm-hmm. She all she needs to save her village is money. And like this value of money, like she probably obsessed over it for all those years. We only see little snippets of her stealing from pirates, That's true. but I'd imagine it wasn't easy. And I feel like post this and her village getting saved, now she still values the importance of money and always wants to be in a place fi- like financially like secure. I get secure. that. I, I always feel like I understand that for quite a lot of it, but I feel like she should have had an arc later on in the series. In, and I, it probably would have been fucking boring if people wouldn't give a shit. But <laughs> she should have had an arc later on in the series where she slowly starts to understand that uh, like money, money isn't everything. everything uh, because it, I guess it's played off as a joke later on. Uh, that she, you know, just wants so much fucking money. Yeah, it would be really cool if she had to choose between, like, obviously one of her friends and money. And yeah, obviously at least just have a friend. scene. Yeah, at least have a scene like that. Because there's got to be uh, just something like that. Because Nami doesn't and get a lot And you can have a comedic nowadays. effect, too, where it's like, God damn it, I should have taken the money. <laughs> you guys are assholes. <laughs> uh, speaking of Nami's backstory, Bellamy is really strong and effective because... Uh, Okay, I can't remember the fucking guy's name, but the the weird cat-looking uh, marine and Bellamere, 
I think are really good, like opposites of each other in the spectrum of like the Navy. Because mm-hmm. uh, obviously, weird cat looking guy helps out uh, the Arlon Park. I think it was a rat. It was rat? A rat. Okay, rat looking guy. Uh, I see the fucking symbolism. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was definitely rat in the anime, and I think they went with weasel in the Viz translation for the manga, which was like, why? But I get it because he's kind of like a weasel, like in regards to being a marine that's accepting money from Arlong to screw over the people that he should be saving. And Bellamir is a really good example of just like a, a, a Navy Marine that stands by her principles, whilst Weasel Man was a Navy uh, officer who didn't. And you can see how their actions as individuals affect the people around them. And I just think it's effective. One Piece does a lot of that. There's a lot of parallels and stuff like that, which I think is really good. Hell yeah. And also in this one, we get the, the walk the to Arlong walk. Park, which is he puts his hat on Nami, says, of course, I'll save you. Um, and then, dare I say, epic walk. And I will say that for, for this, sure. it was actually better in the anime than in the manga. Yeah, probably. Well, there was actually really no walk in the manga. You just get that awesome moment between Luffy mm-hmm. and... Um, and Nami, you get to see all the Straw Hats like kind of like just appear, right, ready to go, and then it flashes to them in the next panel at the Arlong Park gate. While One Piece, which is obviously like very often criticized for being very, very slowly paced, which it absolutely is, but sometimes scenes that are more slowly paced hit harder. Yeah, and I always notice that. Like, there's always great moments in One Piece, and when I watch the anime, I'm like, wow, this is taking forever to get to where. The next moment, like the good moment, and in that moment, I almost always appreciate it more in the mm-hmm, anime mm-hmm. because of how slowly they kind of cover each little bit. You can't really miss anything. Yeah, that makes sense. I get that. I get that. Uh, I I just got reminded of something, which was uh, you had that really fun moment where Zoro accidentally wanders to Arlong Park for a little bit and hangs out yeah. there, which I think is really good. Obviously, setting up. Oh, we we meet Hachi, and you meet Hachi. Yeah. He's just a chill fish a really dude. really cool character, yeah. Who doesn't even realize that Zoro is a bad guy. <laughs> yep. Which I think... Oh, is something really cool. very important I think we need to mention is um, you get the scene where uh, Nojiko, Nami's sister... Yeah. Goes to, like, says, like, I'll explain to you guys the situation here um, so you fully understand why Nami acted the way she did and, like, why you guys should leave and all that. And then um, Zoro's like, yeah, I'll hear you out. Falls asleep. Luffy's like, uh, Luffy's like, I really don't care. I'm taking a walk. <laughs> and Usopp's the only person who actually listens again, being the normal, rational person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and Sanji's just only listening because it's a hot girl. Yeah. <laughs> she wants, he wants to get some fuck. I think uh, going back to like, you know how we said like characters uh, aren't like just good or just evil. Like one of the other things that's introduced to us in this arc is like, you know, we're introduced to these uh, fishmen, but like we're we're not like, told if th- whether they're good or evil and i like that especially since like we're introduced to the character hachi because like hachi just seems like a really good guy in comparison to the rest of the fishmen in that arc yeah and you get the th- obviously some themes of like racism where yeah they're like very discriminative towards humans and they're, like they just see themselves as way superior exactly but like at-, at least we're not like you know outright told fishmen are bad because then that would make us the viewers also i guess racist towards yeah. the fishermen yeah, Oda would never do that because we get the whole scene in Fishman Island afterwards, right? Yeah. So no, I definitely just prefer that Hachi was just introduced to us as this cool, chill guy and yeah. not just an evil fishman as well. Oh, but God, I give Arlong good. Park a 9.5. I gave it a 9. Ooh. Yeah, no, I think it's a 9. For sure. Okay. Um, just- and I do like Baratie more, but like trying to be a little bit more objective, I give it a little bit higher yeah, 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 than, yeah. than Baratie. 100%. Um, I, I really think like Arlong Park is the point in the story where it's like, this is it. This is where it gets good. And yeah, if, I'm hooked. It's exactly. like, if you, if you read, if you end Arlong Park and you don't like One Piece, then it's like, I don't know if you're going to like it, the rest of it. Um, fair enough. I think that's a fair claim. And it tends to be the point where people decide they want to watch the rest of the, um, the show or read the rest of the manga. So yeah, nine out of 10. Um, and the final battle was pretty cool. Yeah. The big very moves. symbolic. You see all of Nami's things flying oh, out it's of... It's very uh, good. It's very well done. Out of Arlong Park. And he actually destroys Arlong Park while taking down Arlong himself. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, okay, next up. Logtown. Logtown. 
I got you. <laughs> <laughs> it's only four chapters and what like a couple episodes. Yeah. Some of some of which are filler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh I mean it it's only four chapters, but it does a lot of big things. Uh obviously Buggy and Alvida come back and so it's like, oh okay, these guys are reoccurring now. Yeah. Uh, which I think And you should have had a feeling they were gonna be reoccurring when you have they were they were showing the cover stories with Buggy and Alvida, and you get True. to see Buggy's backstory in the very beginning with Shanks, so you know he's gonna be a somewhat important character. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess in the manga, and the anime definitely had no indication like that. Oh, fair enough. Um and then you get introduced to Monkey D Dragon, but you have no idea. It isn't until Tweet. way later do you know who that is. <laughs> yeah. And what do we see Smoker, oh, the first Logia yeah, type. Smoker and Tashigi. I love Tashigi. T- Same. Um Oh yeah, yeah. It's first Logia type. Uh, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, like I, I I thought that was cool because like when Smoker was introduced and he's like, oh, like his entire body is like made out of smoke or whatever, I was like, how the heck do you beat that? <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's another precursor to Crocodile. I feel like there's a lot of setup in One Piece to making sure that when Crocodile is introduced, not only is his powers understandable, but also threatening. Yeah. Because you have to have Mihawk and Smoker as two powerful enemies, and then you're like, Crocodile is like a mixture of both of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one thing I want to say about One Piece, like one thing that I love is there's always questions that you don't know and, and you find out way later in the story. And I love not knowing stuff and like kind of being teased about certain things about the world and characters and abilities and all that. And up until this point, there really hasn't been a lot of that. And then Logtown comes in hot with like Logia types. How do they work? Um, obviously, we get the introduction to the Grand Line at, right after this. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. We also get Dragon and like... What's his ability? Who is he? You get Luffy, which is one of the best moments in Log- Logtown, the comparison with Luffy smiling right before death oh, yeah. alongside um, uh, Goldie Roger, who did the same thing. Yeah, 100%. But at, the, at that, in the same, um, what, I, what I'm getting at is he was saved by a lightning bolt. They were like, shit, is that lightning bolt just fate? Was that pure luck? Or was that related to Dragon's ability? Yeah, because we, I, Dragon... Yeah. We, st- we saw that he did something with wind. Can he control the weather? Like, where did this storm come from? And Dragon appears, and yeah, he do we, saved we, we Luffy still with don't some really wind know stuff. That. We have no idea. No, yeah, yeah, we have no clue. <laughs> so we have no idea if the connection to lightning is with Dragon, but I think it's almost confirmed. Like, it had something to do with wind or weather or something. Yeah, or something. Oh, we see knows? the gust right when he appears, and it blows. Yeah, smoke yeah, away. yeah. It blows smoke away. Uh, um, but it's cool. But also, we get themes of we get a lot of themes of fate as well. Because um, actually, maybe I shouldn't talk about this yet. When do we do we do, Oh no! Actually, post Fishman Island, we get Luffy's bounty of thirty million. Right. And it flashes back to his hometown, where um, everyone's like, "Oh, look, Luffy's uh, got a bounty. That's so great. He's he's living his dream." And then the the mayor of the town's like um, very negative. What's so great about being a being a pirate? And he's like, he's like, look how happy he looks in the picture. <laughs> um, and we we get to see he's like he he's like living his dream or fate, and then pretty much directly afterwards, there's more themes of fate with the lightning bolt. So I I I think it's interesting. And then another character that appeared, Dragon. Obviously, they both have the will of D, which we haven't found out yet. Oh, we find yeah, out later. 100%. There's all this mystery and like interesting stuff that we don't it's know all about set the world up. introduced here. A hundred percent. It's like a necessary sort of arc for sort of setting up a bunch of stuff. Uh, before I you give it a seven point seven five. I I'm not doing points. I just gave it a seven. <laughs> I th- I think for me, uh, this this arc was like terrifying, right? Because like you know, me not being a manga reader or anything. Oh like, yeah. I, I Evan thought, thought it was Luffy gonna end there. I thought that this is where it was done. Like I thought Luffy would have actually died here. Oh my god. Oh, uh, imagine <laughs> if Luffy actually just fucking died there. And that was it. And it was like, one piece is over. Okay, when when you're a child, just like, you know, watching this show and you're just like, oh my gosh, like, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, it like shows end that whenever they want these days, right? Like, I just thought, okay, this is just where this one's going to end. And I was like, that's very unfortunate that that might make it my favorite show. And, you know, I, I was I was prepared for it. I was like, yep, it's happening. Luffy's going to die. This, this is it. And then it didn't. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 7 out of 10. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, no, it was a good 7 out of 10. <laughs> cool. Uh, I didn't actually have this on the original list, but Reverse Mountains after this, right? Yes. It's like Short. two episodes. 
it, I mean, it, it's just a sort of one... It does two important things. They go up Reverse Mountain. Laboon. And then they meet Laboon. <laughs> which Laboon is yeah, we, we... exciting. And it's so cool that Oda sets up stuff like Laboon that pays off way, way, way later down the line. So we get Laboon, and like it was sad, but then it's way sadder later on. I remember mm-hmm. Adamax, because Adamax doing... The, we're doing the One Piece Virgin podcast where he reads it and it's his first time and we get to like kind of see his perspective. Yeah, yeah. And like, he was like, oh, it was so sad with Laboon. I'm like, bro, you haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> um, we also got to meet Crocus. Crocus. It was a member of Roger's crew, right? Yes. Do you find but out we, that we he's don't a know mem- that We do not know that yet. Oh, okay, okay. So he's just an old dude. Just an old dude. Just an old just fella. An old um, and that's introduces it. Introduces the log pose. He was very funny. There were some very funny scenes with Crocus. Um, Crocus. Uh, uh, that's it. What's the rating? <laughs> uh, reverse Mountain. I'll give it a nice seven. Sure. Uh, sure, I'll give it a six. I mean, it did what it needed to do. Yeah, oh, there's one it. foreshadowing scene in Reverse Mountain where uh, Zoro's like, wow, climbing a mountain's impossible. And Sanji's like, uh, it's possible. And it just kind of never talked about again. Yeah. And it foreshadows Sanji not being from the East Blue and having to uh, cross. Fair enough. That's cool. Yeah. That was cool. Huh. And like I, I said, I laughed my like head that. off with Crocus. Yeah. Um, and in the anime, Nami kills a man. Anyway. Really? <laughs> yeah, in the anime, it comes right after a filler arc, and a guy like who who is a Devil Fruit user comes onto the boat, and Nami pushes him off into the water, into the reverse yeah. mountain stream, yep. and he's a Devil Fruit user, so obviously he drowns. So he just dies. He yeah. just dies, yeah. <laughs> so Nami actually just kills a man. Um, all right, Whiskey Peak. That's what next. That's next, right? Whiskey Peak? Whiskey, Whiskey Peak. Peak, you get kind of, they mention Crocodile. You yeah, it's sort of the Robin. setup. It's the setup of just the Alabaster Saga in general. <laughs> I still yeah, have my same Vivi note for and... this arc. It's like, in the anime, it was four episodes, and I definitely still don't remember what it was about. <laughs> my favorite bit of Whiskey Peak, genuinely, is when the guy is like, you look at the cactus, the whole place is cactus themed, and then it's like, it zooms into the cactus, and it's all gravestones. And it's... Oh, shit. I just thought that was, like, really an effective way of using the terrain to, like, prove a point that a lot of fucking people have died. Um, I thought it was really good. I mean, you get into... It's just, like, the introduction to the Baroque works exactly. and whatnot. Zoro fights a bunch of guys. Luffy fights a bunch of guys. What so The funny moment that I really love is um, they kind of... They, rather than just going into a straight battle, they try to trick the Straw Hats by partying with them. And once they fall asleep, they're going to kill them. Zoro, they got them all drunk and all that. Zoro didn't fall for it. He pretty much single-handedly beats Baroque Works yeah. and kind of taunts them for being weak. And then Luffy wakes up and he's like, Zoro, what did you do to our friends? And then <laughs> Zoro and Luffy start fighting. And just the like after effects or like just the result of them fighting, they were able to take out relevant characters, which was funny. <laughs> or important characters within Baroque works. But yeah, just a, like you said, it's a setup arc. You introduced a VB. Like a se- a lot of people yeah, I'll give it like a 7. <laughs> like 6.5. Yeah, I yeah. don't have any complaints. That's why I, yeah, I don't want to give it a 6. The fact that I don't even remember this, I probably shouldn't even rate it. But like, yeah, prob- uh, 4, 5. Whoa. <laughs> uh, it's still good. 6. Sure. Next one. Let's go. Little Garden. Do um, you remember Little Garden? No, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small, yeah, it's a uh, small oh, arc the leading the up to Alabasta. Yeah. You get the, yeah. Cr- uh, what are the names? Some- <sighs> Doffy is one of them. Dory and Brogy. Sorry. Yeah. Not Dory Doffy. and Brogy. I love those giants. They were so wholesome. They are cool. I mean, mm-hmm. not only does this island introduce the giants, but it also introduces, like, there's dinosaurs on this island? Yeah, yeah, there's like other like species and stuff. It's just well, like you yeah. start seeing how weird and cool all of the different islands like the, are on the yeah, ground. Yeah, exactly. Line. Like you find out like the world isn't like our own. It's just it's different. It's yeah. very different. Yeah, and every island from this point is very different. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it does set that. And then set you have Mister Three with his fucking wax stuff. I thought that was cool. Yeah, and you get the badass moment with Zoro where he is willing to cut off his own leg. And actually. You you have a really cool moment with Sanji where he talks directly to Crocodile. Really? Remember? Oh, on the phone. Yeah. That's right. And he like pretends to be someone else and talks. Mr. To Prince. Yeah, Mr. Prince. I think it's that's a really cool, effective moment while Sanji is away from the rest of the uh, crew. 
Um, like I said, these are just small islands leading up to the bigger island that's Alabasta. And the part of the reason why, I'm pretty sure Robin offered or someone offered to give Luffy a eternal pose that'll bring them straight to Alabasta. And Luffy's like, no, I'm not shortening my journey. I'm not making it easier. No, no, no. And breaks it or something like that. <laughs> um, there's some like obviously impact. Nami in this arc gets bitten, which is what makes oh, her yes. sick during the next arc. Again, the setup. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Setup like, on this. yeah. Um, I, I give it like a six. Yeah, sure, six. Next one. Uh, well, Evan, what do you give it? Real quick. I, I, probably like a six, but the one last thing that I really liked about this oh, arc was oh, okay, sorry. The, the, the name, right? Like, it's called Little Garden, but like everything on that island was just huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's a good I sense. never even thought of that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Drum Island. Another underrated arc, in my opinion. Drum I'm Island a big is so fan. good. I, I've, I've seen people like bash on Drum Island, but I really like it a lot. Yeah, uh, so you get to meet. I, I don't um, like it that much. I just think it had some weird Christmas vibes. Christmas vibes are always good. Well, it's a snow island. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, I just don't like Christmas. <laughs> dude, one of Luffy's most badass moments yeah, in I was the about series to say. is when he's fucking. He's carrying Nami on his back, Zoro, uh, not Zoro, Sanji from his teeth, climbing. His jacket blew off, climbing a 10,000 meter. 10,000 meters. The high, the tallest building in the world is like 900 meters or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 10,000, so like more, over 10 times the amount. Bare, like in a blizzard with frostbite, with a cutoff shirt, and like you just get these moments where he slides down and he can't let his friends drop and like his fingers are peeling off and it's just so ugh, like... It's incredible. I don't even know how to describe it, but it just it is so epic. No, it's and definitely I, a cool epic moment for sure. It's just, there's, a, I, there's a few epic moments. You had the epic moment with Luffy protecting uh, the flag, Dr. Hirolux's flag, mm -hmm. as he's standing yeah, on top that, of the that building. That was pretty cool as well. I guess for I me, love what I didn't really like about the arc was just Chopper's character at that time. Whoa, I was about to say I really what? like Chopper. I, I, I didn't like, Chopper. like it. I just, I just thought... I thought like, his wow, whole story is... was really interesting and his had a completely different perspective. What's really cool about Chopper, I felt, in this is because he generally just started learning life from the moment he got the devil fruit. Yeah. And yeah. so so it, it's really interesting to see his perspective on the world around him only knowing about the things that uh, his... Doctor, the doctor that raised him knew, right? And so yeah. he sees pi pirates in a very positive light because the only positive figure in his life was a pirate. Was a pirate, exactly. And mm -hmm. there's just generally like a lot of things about his perspective on the world that get set up here, which is just makes him a really interesting character. And it's just a really creative character that you, I guess you wouldn't really find in other yeah. shonen like series. Like I said, Oda always introduces a different character, a completely different character one after another when they get introduced as the Straw Hat. Yeah. And like you said, he's very new to the world and he really only knows Dr. Hirluck, but also he just does not trust humans and hate and hates humans. Oh yeah, 100%. So when Luffy's actually being nice to him, it's, a com it's completely new to him and he doesn't know how to feel. And he looks up to pirates and he almost looks up to Luffy, but he's too scared to go out to the world and Luffy has to convince him. Yeah. Um, we, that old lady talks about the Will of D and new Goldie Roger. Um, I guess people just didn't like Wapple. I remember liking well, the old lady people... a lot more than Chopper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Yo, you know what it is? People look at arcs and like they, they look, there was no huge fight because Wapple is a shitty villain. Yeah, yeah. But, but it was the, the arc wasn't about Wapple. It was yeah, a small arc no, no. leading up to Alabasta where the real battle is going to take place. It's another, it's, a, it's just a setup arc. Yeah. And it doesn't, it just shows how he just, Waffles is an idiot king. That's about it. Like, yeah. he's an asshole, doesn't care about anyone by himself. And it wasn't about that battle. It was about everything else. And actually, else to that be fair, Waffle has some like interesting effects on Alabaster and like Vivi and stuff later on. Yes. Which is really cool. It's true. Uh -huh. Every character, Oda somehow makes important. It's great. But I loved our Dr. Here Luck. He went out with a bang. Um, his quote or his speech at the end was fantastic. And actually, to be fair, this is the first time we hear about Zoan type devil fruits. Oh, that's true. Yeah, with Dalton, true, actually. Dalton yeah. and then Chopper. So, mm -hmm. yeah, still fucking setting stuff up. More setups, yeah. Uh, I actually gave it quite a high score here because I really liked it. I gave it an, uh, an eight. Yeah, I would say eight, eight, eight in a bit. I'll, I'll give, give it an eight. I'll give it a seven. Yeah, that's fair. All right. All right. Ba da ba boom. Whoosh, whoosh. That's the noise of a desert, because we're 
<laughs> Bada ba bum. Sound like I don't think you've ever been to a desert, Daniel. Where <laughs> I have, in my eyes, when I read Alabaster. <laughs> That's how good. Here we are. An immersive One Piece is. Wow. Here we are in Alabaster, an arc that when I read it for a second time was a lot better than I read it for the first time. I I didn't like Alabaster as a child, but that might be because I don't like deserts that much. Desert settings. <laughs> what? I know, it's weird. Why he was so keen on deserts? Like, it doesn't matter that much. I, I don't like, know. It matters in regards to crocodiles. I was just like, sort of power. like... No, I, I get him on the whole desert vibe because, like, the, for off topic, but the anime Desert Punk, set in the desert, trash anime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just always found the setting of a desert really boring as a kid when I was, like, looking at bits of it as a kid, so I didn't find the whole Alabaster arc super exciting. But when I re- reread the whole series, like, a couple years ago... I thought Alabaster was really good and really well done. And I think the key, th- before we get to anything else, the key thing that Alabaster did that no arc had done before was Luffy lost a fight. Yep. He fucking lost. He almost died like twice. <laughs> Multiple. I fucking, I hate villains that let's leave their people to survive. Okay, yeah, I don't it's like, like that trope. I hate I hate that trope I know, it's so, so much. So annoying, but at least I think Crocodile at least thought Luffy was going to die. Like he didn't He thought Luffy yeah, was going to Yeah, leave these 12 alligators while you're in this cage well, rather than just killing you but myself. Besides the, I, mean, oh, I meant let when me he dropped you into a sand pit. Yeah, I meant the sand pit. Like I I felt like Crocodile thought Luffy was already dead before he dropped him into the sand pit. I'm okay with that. But the the crocodile thing Yeah, that yeah, pissed yeah. Me off. That's I fair. Hate, That's fair. That. Um, I hate that trope so much. I'd rather the fight happen, you kick the guy's ass, and he somehow escapes. Oh, yeah. Knowing then, that there'll be another fight to happen later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather, than, or like maybe you think he's dead and he's not, but I hate when you leave them to die by, you're going to drown in five minutes, I'm going to leave now. Yeah, you, you have to be more creative with the sort of rematch trope. Yeah. Because... Um, but yeah, this is, like, like you said, there was a setup with Smoker and the like oh, the yeah. whole logia type and now yeah. we finally see it in action this and is how the he, luffy couldn't do anything about smoker and the same thing that happens here he can't do anything about crocodile yeah. until he figures out crocodile's innate weak, weakness which is water yeah yeah cool. and then and I like, honestly the reason why everyone loves alabasta is because you get literally every single character has a sick fight oh yeah sanji versus mr two Zoro, uh, Zoro versus Mr. One finally cut steel. Usopp has an amazing yeah, moment. I would just want to say for a second, fight. this is the start <laughs> of Usopp's journey to becoming the greatest character. He has such Hell a yeah. great <laughs> moment because clearly he is outmatched in that battle, and they only win by using like uh, tactics and trickery and their smarts to get ahead in that battle. But then it's his sheer determination and his sheer like belief in his captain and his will to to. In, like his dream that just pushes him forwards and I feel like it's such an effective moment for Usopp um, and it, it's just so good and it's the start of Usopp's like journey to I be. feel like a lot of the fights in One Piece up until like this arc were mostly just like hey I punch things and that's how I win and like in this arc like it all came down to everyone having to be like a lot smarter about how they approach oh, things oh 100% mm-hmm. and, this is one of the few times Luffy actually has to think yeah and he does. Luffy, a Zoro, bit. Sanji are the type of guys to just overpower their opponents or have a sick close fight, but it just comes down to who's stronger. Yep. And then you have Usopp and Nami and Chopper who kind of have to outsmart and use a little bit of tactics because they're not as overpowered as our monster trio. Yep, 100%. I agree with that. Um, there's so many good moments uh, in this arc. And I think Crocodile's entire like plan to like incite a civil war is just very well executed and i think it's a it's just a really good example of a, like a villainous plot because you if we go back to syrup village we've already like established that some villains have like uh plots. nefarious plots and such <laughs> and now in alabaster you, you it showcases a villain who does one of those plots extremely effectively it's a better execution of that plot that was supposed to be taking place in syrup village yeah but i always feel like the syrup village one is purposely not as good so that this one looks good in comparison yeah uh, i don't know about that <laughs> well because the guy in syrup village is not so you know he's just a common or god and he's just a regular ass pirate guy that's true but crocodile's a warlord he's a big boy well that 
that's why Oda does a good job escalating the series. I don't know if it yeah. was purposely bad per se, but it was just they were East Blue. It was smaller stakes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I almost feel like Oda had Crocodile planned for such a long time. I mean, oh yeah, Oda plans ahead. He probably had all crazy. the warlords planned. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I I really like his character, and I think it's really effective. Um, Vivi is really good in this arc, and I know I'm skipping to the end. But I think it's so good and such a good, like, part of Vivi's character that she didn't join the Straw Hats. Right? I still think it's very disappointing <laughs> that she yeah, didn't Yeah, because you're joined. an idiot, Evan. No, I'm not. No, for this entire setup of, hey, Vivi, you're a great character. You know, we want you to be a part of the crew. And she's like, oh, you know yeah. what? I love hanging out with you guys. This yeah, is all yeah, great. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I, I want this person to be a part of the crew. I like this person. You know what? I want to vibe with this person in every single but, episode. Know, she has... She has the responsibility. Yeah, I know she has responsibility. Having yeah. all she... of that build up and her connection with the crew, and then at the end making the responsible decision to to uh, represent her country and lead her entire it nation into a new my age heart, is man. is just like such good character writing that I feel insulted that you would even suggest. No, no, no. It's a, it's amazing that she decides that, right? But like, it, I, I, I get it. Like that, that, it, yeah. that was the best option. But it, it just breaks my heart. And, and I, I guess I'm that's actually what, with that's what makes I'm this yeah, yeah, more yeah. impactful my, at the end. It broke my heart. That's too, what you're supposed to feel, so and that's why it's good. Yeah, that's what the crew felt. Yeah, yeah exactly. At this point, you're exactly, starting to feel yeah. like you're a member of the crew, and you wanted Vivi to join. Bro, and my heart I, was broken the, too. Real talk, but real was, talk. All amazing. right, like I wanted to draw an X on my hand and like raise my fist into the air. Like it was just that. On your, yeah. yeah, on your arm, you mean? <laughs> Not on your but, yeah, hand. But, yeah, fake fan, fake hand. fan. No, no, no. You know what I meant? It's like the back of your arm, like yeah. in your wrist oh. area. This isn't Yu Gi Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that scene where they all hold up the X's and stuff is just like incredibly powerful. Not only because of that scene, but because of the stakes that they went through to even do that. Um, yeah, they yeah. all went through a lot. Like, every single one of them went through a lot in that arc. It's like the first proper big arc of One Piece. And we get a few more of these throughout the series, but it's like the first... It's huge. It's like a first saga. And um, I love it, you know? Well, it was the end of the Alabasta saga. Yeah, exactly. And all this lead up to yeah. this, and hmm. I don't know. I just, I'm gonna give it a nine. I, w- I, I was giving it a ten. Really? I was giving I, it. A ten. I just like couldn't a, think of anything that I would change about it. Besides, maybe yeah, not setting true. it in a desert. <laughs> besides, maybe crocodile not fucking letting them live. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's a nine for me, for sure. I'll give it a nine point one. No, I'm kidding. I'm my giving ten, it. My ten is reserved right now. <laughs> I got a few tens I sprinkle about. Uh, Alabas is good. I mean, what more can you say? Good shit. Dog. Yeah, it has yeah, a dog yeah. gun. Oh, also, uh, sorry. Before we go on, I really fucking love in anime where they have like organizations, and I love so that I really love like the Mister One, Mister Two, Mister Three thing. Like, I just think it was really cool. Anyway, moving on. Jaya. Oh, that was a big jump. I guess it was just a lot of filler in between. You get the post Alabasta filler. You get Goat Island, Reluca Island. What the hell are these? So my note, uh, yeah, my Jaya. note for this arc is: I thought it was a waste of time, and unfortunately, a lot of important characters were introduced no. here. <laughs> okay, so Jaya. Okay, the two best things of Jaya: number one, Luffy punching Bellamy; number two, Blackbeard's introduction. Yeah. <laughs> number three. The mirror of what happened with Shanks in the bar and Luffy and Zoro. Did the oh, same. I forgot about that. Oh, you reminded me. Yeah, Thank you so much, you. Mr. Briggs. I appreciate your help. <laughs> Mr. Briggs. <laughs> well, so uh, Bellamy is kind of like a complete contrast, or like Bellamy and his crew are a contrast to Luffy and their crew. Luffy's all about ambition and dreams, and Bellamy, Bellamy and his crew are the exact opposite. Yeah. And then you also get the whole thing, like the, um, the mirror of what happened with Shanks. Bellamy's kind of petty and will fight over just about every, anything, while Luffy and Zoro were kind of the same way. But this time it's like, we're not going to start like start a fight in the bar over some spilt drinks and some like just some like words being said. Yeah, exactly. Right? There's no reason for us to fight. Why are we fighting? Yeah. Especially after all the stuff that happened in Alabasta where they needed to fight for specific reasons. Now it's like, are we really going to get into a bar fight over nothing? Yeah, 100%. And uh, 
shows that they grow, grew, grow grew as, as characters as well. Grow as characters. Which, I mean, I've always said that I think like Luffy and a lot of the main Straw Hats, are, they don't actually have a lot of character growth throughout the series in terms of their personality, but that's because they're more of a catalyst for other characters' character growth. Uh, mm -hmm. You find that Luffy shapes the people around him and shapes the world around him as he progresses, but his character doesn't change that much. It does, but like not as much as like other characters do in other shows and stuff. But well, yeah, but it's still good. They're notorious pirates who had things happen to them in their past that shaped who they are today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Versus, like they're not at the start of their journey almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um. I, but it's good, like, because it's effective, because they're the catalyst for other people's changes throughout the series. Exactly. And I think it's really like like Vivi's change and all of these characters, like Robin and Usopp and um, yada yada yada. Uh, and but you do get these small moments of character progression for them, and and I, I do think it's effective. What I really like about this arc is when you get introduced to Blackbeard, and the fact that. Blackbeard and Luffy like have a moment where they like share uh like their their dreams and Blackbeard's like one of the first characters that doesn't mock Luffy for his dreams and it's sort of like this eerily moment where like Luffy and Blackbeard are kind of bonding which is so like it's so crazy in hindsight knowing what Blackbeard oh, yeah. is like now I mean, who he, he actually is I mean, and what he's done. He, he never this... changed as a person. It's just like yeah. he, it, it's not like he was lying then. It, it, he he's still a dreamer. Yeah, he also, just has different. Also, correct me if I'm dreams. wrong. This is like the one and only moment that they meet, right? Yeah, it's the only time they ever meet <laughs> until Impel Down. Do they even meet in Impel Down? Do they meet there? I thought they did. I thought they did. No, no, I, no. I, I thought they did. I, I think like. At like multiple points, they are both in Impel Down, but they never actually meet. They each never other. actually oh, like meet really? each other. I'm yeah, pretty I didn't sure. know that. Oh, I mean, I guess they meet. Oh no, maybe they, Florida, maybe they do. Maybe they do. Kind of. But what I found interesting um, was like Blackbeard has so much effect on Luffy's life indirectly, um, mm -hmm. and the fact that they don't actually cross paths that often, if at all, it's just really effective as part of the reason why Blackbeard's such a good villain. Blackbeard's amazing. Yeah, he's I so also want to say. So we know what you're saying, number one, the best moment is obviously when Luffy literally imprints his fist into Bellamy's skull. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until Bellamy started bad-mouthing his Nakama, because you could say whatever you want about me, do whatever you want to me, I don't give a fuck, it's not worth a fight, but you start bad-mouthing my Nakama and their dreams and my dreams and, my, like, mm -hmm. and all that, at that point, that's when he threw his first punch and absolutely devastated Bellamy. Just fucked him up, and it was good. Yeah. And speaking of dreams, it's a big setup for Skypea, yep. which is literally a fucking island in the sky, which is... Skypea is so cool. Yeah. Let's just move on to Skypea. Um, but we've got to give Jaya a rating. Jaya, right? 7 out of 10. It's a good 7. Solid 7. Okay. All right. There's a lot to say about Skypea, but I really want to get this out of the way before I forget about it. Skypea is such a cool setting... The, the, like, the sky city and stuff. It's such a fucking shame that 80% of it is set in a jungle. In the forest area. <laughs> Where it's like, the only thing that indicates that they're in the sky is there's the occasional cloud that's there. The clouds. Like, yeah. the fucking sky city is so cool. And that area is so cool. And then, like, you're just in a fucking jungle for the... For the and that's was so disappointing to me. And I like Skypea. And for a long time, Skypea was one of those arcs where people felt like it didn't really have much of a connection to the rest of the show. But, mm -hmm. I mean, we're recently learning out that we are wrong about that. Um, due to like, true. Re like recent developments that are sort of linking things that happened in Skypea to the rest of the story. But for... Very long time. It makes time. sense, though. It's, it's isolated from the rest of yeah, the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but very, for a very long time, some people would even suggest you could skip it because... Oh, uh, never. But, Come on. It's not, it's not bad. It's yeah. good. Like, I enjoyed it. And the other... I wouldn't say, like, it's an amazing arc, but I... I like it. I thought it was good. But it also... And one of my favorite things is that NL is legit, like, a fort... Like, we saw Crocodile and Smoker, mm -hmm. who were, like, these strong foes. But they're nothing compared oh, yeah. to the NL. I mean, and the fact that at a snap of his fingers, he just wiped out an island. Like, oh, I, 
The thing I about Enel like, is that he called himself a god, and I fucking believe it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I believe that one hundred percent. I was like, oh my god, they're Dude. up against gods now. L- Luffy Legit. just happens he... to be the like the perfect counter to Enel, right? Exactly. And yeah. if it wasn't for that, he, if he was the same power level but he had a different ability, they would just be wiped out, right? He would have been one shot. Yeah. The first time he got hit, which was a hilarious scene. It felt like Saitama's okay moment, or like this huge buildup, so dramatic. And now launches his attack d- that goes right through Luffy, and then Luffy's just like, oh, hmm. yeah. With that stupid face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what happened? Um, <coughs> Skype here was necessary as well for one other key thing, which was to give Robin time to develop friendships with the crew. Uh, That's true. Because one of my problems later on uh, with Brooke is that you have, you have the arc where Brooke gets introduced. And then they all split up and there's no arc between that. So I almost feel like there's almost, it feels like there's no reason for Brooke to return after the two years um, because he hasn't had an, you know, an arc to develop his relationship with the crew like Robin does. And his bond. Yeah. yeah. And Robin gets this entire arc so that the, so the, so that the next arc can be more effective. If you didn't have this, then I think the readers would care a lot less about Robin as a That's character. That's true. That is so true. the only like argument that could be made for that, like, is with with Thriller Bark, it was just a really long arc. Yeah, so I guess so. Ode, so like maybe they had some development there, but I feel exactly. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It just needed to be like an arc between Thriller Bark and Saviori, just something, just something. Mm-hmm. I agree. To give I think Brooke should have been something more development with the crew. Like, well, there was a, there was a filler arc. Oh fuck it, Spa Island. Okay, um, but ultimately, Another, I like maybe... Skypea. And there were some cool fights. Uh, Zoro uses his fucking... So, like, you have the moment where Zoro cuts metal in Alabaster. Uh, but Zoro in Skypea has that moment where it, it, he does the thing where he slices and it does, like, an energy beam through the sky or whatever. Yeah, he's able to cut from a distance. Yeah, which exactly. Is similar to what Mihawk did in... Yes, that's it. Um, that's yeah, what I was thinking Brat, of. Yeah. He was, he's starting to learn some of the techniques that Mihawk, and I think that's really important for his progression as a character. Mm-hmm. And the crew have some good moments together. And it's actually... Oh, we forgot to mention Mr. Prince in Alabasta. I give it a 9.5. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, of, one of the cool things is actually, this is like one of the only arcs where Robin actually has like an actual fight. Um... She doesn't really so sad. get one after this, which is hey, sad. hey man, she, she has such a cool ability that is so creative stuff. in battles. Well, it's also overpowered. So <laughs> yeah, you know what ends up happening. So all her battles after introduction, she one shots everyone because she's OP, and then she kind of like post time skip. It just she just hasn't had any opportunity to shine. But then again, neither has Zoro per se. Yeah, that's fair. Um, anyway, that's... Actually, no, well, I mean, Zoro had against Monet and... He had, like, and, Pika and stuff. Uh, Stone, yeah, exactly. Uh, Skype is cool. I don't know what else to say about it. 8 out of 10. Mm, I'll give it an 8 as well. I, I think I agree with your rating. It's a good 8. I'm like, yeah, it's better than Jaya. It's not as good as uh, <laughs> yeah. Arlong and Alabasta. Yeah. Sounds good. Long ring, long land. The worst arc in all of One Piece. Hold up. Way... Dun, 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 dun. It's not that bad in the manga. Dude, it's just a waste of time. Okay. People are saying Sky Island's a waste of time. Hold up. Foxy is the worst villain. Oh, hold up, okay. And they can play I, fucking games. Can I say so this? I, uh-huh. There are three points I want to make. Sorry, Evan. Uh, okay, okay. That's fine. <laughs> point number one. Foxy is objectively a terrible villain, right? But mm-hmm. he gets the upper hand on Luffy and, sh- and actually showcases Luffy's biggest flaw, which is his stupidity. And the the ability the the fact that he could be tricked by like really simple tricks that nobody else would be tricked by but Luffy would be tricked by is like it I think it's really effective in showing off that like you, you so far you've seen Luffy as this really strong character but it shows that Luffy does have a fatal flaw and that he's an idiot <laughs> and I think it's really but good guess what it would have been great if Luffy defeated him by thinking and overcoming his idiocy no, no. but yeah, he just puts a fucking afro on and punches <laughs> the shit out of him no 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 because, like, no, no, no. <laughs> because I, I I don't think if, if he like thought to overcome his idiocy I don't think that was the character progression he needed in that arc because it, it, he wouldn't have had that character progression in such a short amount of time it was more to showcase his weaknesses because I think that becomes a bit mm. more important later on uh, secondly that you have the whole loyalty test thing, which I think is just sort of a foreshadowing to, 
you know, what is that, Nina's lobby and stuff, where um, you you it's just another like solidified that shows that Luffy is loyal to every single member of his crew, including Robin. Um, and I don't know, it helps grow more connected, like to make their their bond more believable. And then I guess thirdly, you get introduced to Al Kaiji in a really. Oh, that was cool at the end of that. Yeah, in a really... Al Kaiji is the right one? He's the ice one. Yeah, ice one. Yeah. yeah. Cool battle. Luffy was pretty much able to determine right away that he had absolutely no, no chance, chance yes. but took him on anyway to give his uh, crew the chance to get away and kind of almost tricked Al Kaiji to say, let's fight 1v1, man versus man. And then it's like, wow, like now you, how can I kill the rest of your crew and you challenge me to a 1v1? And you have the cool uh, foreshadowing or like the cool sort of planting the seeds of doubt when al Kaiji like says that all the crews that Robin's ever been a part of always meet the same ill fate or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, ooh, who is Robin? Why is she yeah, so Yeah, like, why, why is Robin a cursed character, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I like I, it. You know what? I don't think so, it's as bad. It's terrible in so, the anime because they so, add so, shit. So, <laughs> me being an anime only, right? This arc was so out of left field that... It was easy to assume that it was a filler arc, right? Yeah. And I almost skipped it because of that. It was just, it was horrible. Just nothing made sense. It felt like it just didn't belong in the world so, of One Piece. And I was like, why? Two thirds of it is filler. In the anime, yeah. In the anime. And so I've actually never read this arc in the manga. What? Because when I started off as an anime only, and then I went back and read the manga. And when I got to this arc, I'm like, fuck it, this arc sucks, and I skipped it. Huh, interesting. So you can't even fucking have an opinion. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. He okay, watched it in the, the anime. anime. And because I'm, <laughs> be I'm fair, basing it purely on the manga, because the anime fucked it up. It's the worst arc in the anime by far, because they fucked it up really bad. But I think it's effective in the Ocean's manga. They have Ocean's Dream. They have Ocean's Dream, which is like four, four episodes. And they have Foxy's Return, which is a couple episodes mixed in there that are just like... You took a bad arc and you made it worse. Yeah, okay. I'm giving it a four out of ten. You know what? Okay, here's another thing. I like Foxy has a really strong devil fruit power, but he's really bad at using it. Right? I That's like true. the fact <laughs> that there's some characters out there that can be gifted with really strong devil fruits that aren't, you know, good at fighting and so can't use those devil fruits to the fullest of their ability. Right? Because you're obviously going to find the reverse of that, where people have really shitty devil fruits that they use to a really strong ability, so they're really effective. Like. I think that's sort of... But you need to have characters like that. Foxy, I feel like, needs to exist. Like, not every villain has to be, like, a Crocodile or a Enel or a Rob Lucci, right? There's got to be a villain like Crocodile, a villain like Foxy at some point, right, in the, in the Grand Line that can best Luffy in different ways. And I, I think it's effective. And I also like the really long dog. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so I gave it a 6 out of 10. I, you know, for me, it, it, it's probably a four. Uh, the only thing that kind of saves this arc is that Afro Luffy is canon. So it's a good five. I like Afro I Luffy. Afro, is Afro Luffy actually canon? Yeah, Afro Luffy is or canon. Was, or was that during Foxy's return? No, Afro is Luffy is canon. It's wow. in okay, Jump yeah. <laughs> yeah, Afro Luffy you know, is great. You know what's funny? When they call back on this arc when he's... um at Amazon Lily and he's getting hit by the love love ray or whatever and he thinks it's Foxy's attack <laughs> <laughs> oh and uh, sorry fuck you Evan you had time to catch up um, there's Damn. the wow. theory that the Davy back fight was played by um, the Rocks crew right and gold uh, like gold no Roger idea. Who those characters know. are, so you know that's fine. I know who the Rock Screw is, but I don't know. I don't know this theory. What, wasn't that the, the like this whole thing with like how, um, like, or maybe it was played between Gold Roger and Whitebeard or something? There was like something hinting at it in one of those flashbacks mm. where uh, that the, the possibility that they played the Davy backfight at one point, like Gold Roger did. Oh, that's or, like, pretty cool. Either either that. Gold Roger played it or he invented it. Like, I swear oh. to God, that was, like, a thing that like, people were talking about. <laughs> wow. Like, Oh, we get to see Zoro fight with no swords. Oh, that's sick. pretty cool. Anyway, let's move on Sorry, to the final so two I was thinking fucking, about the game. fucking arcs before we end this episode. <laughs> this is really long. <laughs> it's all yeah, a one piece, to be fair. Almost an hour and a half in. Jeez. <laughs> um, Water 7, I really like a lot. Like, even... St- 
like on par with Enos Lobby. I I sometimes feel like Water Seven gets underrated because it's right next to Enos Lobby. And well, it's the build up for Enos Lobby. Yeah, I no, think it's, it's, it's absolutely it's very amazing. Important. But I feel like because it's like the benefits of Water Seven are like finished in Enos Lobby. Yeah, we always appreciate Enos Lobby a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I I really like Frankie's backstory. I really like the whole moral quandary of a shipwright that makes a pirate ship. You know, that sort of whole, is he a criminal for making a ship that a pirate uses? This is um, where we see the end of the Going Merry as well. Oh, and that's like the best. Oh, it is so sad. So sad. It's amazing. Like, we, the Another ship moment is better the actual anime. character in this show. And it's, it's sad to see it go. Being able to add music to like the scene just makes everything so much <laughs> sadder. It made the walk to Arlong Park more epic, and it made this going merry scene absolutely, like, devastating. Yeah, and can I just say my favorite bit of Water 7, actually, and the one of my favorite bits in One Piece in general is Luffy versus Usopp and the fight over going oh, merry. It's, one, it's and, definitely one of my favorites as well. And Usopp's just crazy character development in this moment where he stands up to the captain and he just has there's just, just that fight is so good because it just hurts to watch because mm-hmm. and it's just done so masterfully well and even in the anime it's really good i you know what i love about it as well like other than everything that you just mentioned the fact that usopp actually did a lot of damage to yeah, luffy because through he's, tactics and being smart yeah, because that's exactly. what he's and cuz he's, he's been able to grow luffy. throughout his journey he's been with luffy the whole journey he knows all of luffy's weak points and stuff and mm-hmm. uh I like on top of that, I feel like he learnt some of that from his fight against Foxy, right? Witnessing yeah. the fight against Foxy. Um I just think it's but at the end so of the day, good. At the end of the day, it's Luffy. I, and it was like all that you just did to me. Oh, like, I mean, of course so Luffy's much, gonna win. So much damage, so much planning, so many tactics, and Luffy just fucking yeah. shuts him down. But, so, oh, and it's just like that ca- captain versus crewmate dynamic is was very well done. I've had arguments with people that said that Luffy didn't take that fight seriously. And I'm like, no, the whole point of that fight was that Luffy had to respect Usopp and take that fight seriously. And he did. Yeah. Oh my I God. And it was amazing. And then also Zoro's speech to Luffy after, you know, where he's saying that if you take Usopp back without him apologizing, then I can no longer call you my captain. Like you lose my respect. Dude. It's amazing because Luffy and Zoro tend to be these easygoing guys who don't give a shit. But when shit gets serious, Zoro being the right-hand man, yeah. the first mate of Luffy, steps up and keeps Luffy on his course. And is like, it shouldn't be this easy to give up on your dream and our ambitions and to leave the crew. It is. And oh my god. And to defy our captain. Like, you don't, like, Luffy's not the type to order people around and give orders, but you don't defy him either. Because at the end of the day, you have to respect him as his captain. And Zoro would lose respect if Usopp's away, uh, able to get away with what he did. So Usopp's got to come back and apologize to Luffy, not the other way around. Oh, I have goosebumps just talking. It's yeah. incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. And, and Usopp's entire journey throughout this like arc is uh, it's just so good and it just showcases like how much he's improved since syrup village in lots of different ways and it's part of the reason why Usopp's one of my favorite characters like genuinely he has such good development throughout the show and i think people sleep on him as like a great uh straw hat because he's just not like traditionally a cool character like sanji or zoro is but oh my god i feel like the other cool thing in this arc was that when when they lost to cp9 uh, like obviously they've lost the villains before, but like there was a longer gap between like them going up against villains again, like from this yeah. to the next. And so and it, for me, it just like it impacted me a lot because I was like, oh my god, they lost! Like, are they I, ever gonna get to like fight these guys again? I mean, I, I guess there's a mixture of Water Seven and Enos Lobby, but I also love how CP Nine were all just like regular people that worked in the city. Like the bartender or the shipwright, yeah, yada exactly. yada, or the secretary yeah. that ended up being the secret agents. Like, I, I think it really helped set the right, scene it, of that world. Uh, what is that? I mean, what yeah. else is that to say about Water 7? It's great. It's great. This is one of my 10s. <laughs> it's my 10 too. I'm giving it a 9.5. Well done. <laughs> that's, uh, that's well, well done, Oda. Oh, and actually, can I just say, we get introduced to Spadman, who's one of my favorite villains because of how unlikable he is. I think, <laughs> I think having a villain like Spadman is so effective in, in just like anime in general. Just having a unlikable villain that when they get like beaten or defeated in the end, it just makes you feel really like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you want a villain like that. 
And Spadman does such a good job of being hateable, and I love him for that. Enos Lobby time. Right. I want to give it a 10, but I think I have to give it a 9.5 because now after hyping up Water 7, I feel like they're almost equal. You're right. You're right I gave bro. them both 10. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, Enos no, Lobby they're, they're is both incredible. For me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Enos Lobby is like one of the peaks of One Piece. And actually, there's, All right, there's, I'm giving it a 10. there's more peaks later. But you, I mean, you have the I want to live speech. You have yep. uh, all of the individual battles where they all get times to shine with their abilities and yep. such. And, oh, it's just incredible. I mean, Usopp has crazy moments. Remember so when Usopp, no remember when he st- was on top of the tower and he sniped like Spadman from across the fucking shit. While singing his song. Yep. Oh my God, that's <laughs> they incredible. They burned the flag. Boys, you guys know where it's time so remember when they, they burned the flag? They burned the flag. <laughs> Dude, that's a huge statement because it just shows that Luffy doesn't give a fuck yeah. about what's in his way. He will do anything that he is, thinks is right, regardless of the... Uh, consequences because to him his dream his ambition his friends ambitions and most importantly his nakama are the most important things in the world and he will take on the entire fucking world to save them it's a hundred percent i I love that luffy never has a second thought about the consequences if it's it's like obviously his friends are more important why would there be any other option right world government who gives a shit right it's so good and you have uh you get to see like fucking robin's backstory i'm actually getting goosebumps because of this (laughs) It's so good. <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. There's so many good moments throughout that. You have the whole Frankie family attacking. It's like the big, big conclusion. I, I It's one of my favorite arcs. And um, I remember making tons of AMVs to it back in the day, just using <laughs> Enos Lobby <laughs> clips. You have, Monst- Bro, you have Monster Chopper. You see Frankie fighting. You have... Um, Diablo Jambe Sanji. Diablo fucking Jambe Sanji. Are you kidding me? This shit's hype as fuck. Luffy's rematch against Ashra Mode Zoro. Oh my God, it's... Ashra Mode Zoro. It's, it's so it's, good. Every single battle was amazing. Every single battle... They developed in some way. You have unreal moments. Every character had their time to shine. Oh, you had like Minami. second gear? You had second gear. <laughs> oh, yeah, second gear. That's true. <laughs> you got third gear too, bro. Oh, my second God. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, bro, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Easy. It's, it's Let's fucking absolute go. Absolute masterpiece. Of masterpiece. Of <laughs> There's, I mean, what else is there more to say? End up po- I'm including post Enos Lobby in this. I mean, the post party great is uh, Aokiji's uh, little talk with Robin is really effective at the end of the arc. In I love the anime, it all. There's the whole filler when. Wait, actually, no, no never mind. But I'm thinking um, something else. I'm crazy. Yeah, and <laughs> then obviously, like, oh, Kobe and Helmeppo coming back was a huge deal for me uh because i love kobe and them being trained by garp and they're just being these amazing like they're not amazing fighters but they definitely improved right yeah then you get all the wanted posters and everyone's got wanted posters yeah, everyone and has wanted great posters. and you find out that monkey d dragon is luffy's dad yep and you find out that garp is his granddad all in yep. like one go just beautiful setups from the beginning just finally paying off it, it was incredible it's amazing anyway this has been on for a very long time. Uh, we probably should end this part. I'm glad that you've all been here for the past hour and a half with us. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this rambling of One Piece. Uh, I had an amazing time. It's so that good. was so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun to talk about One Piece. Um, we'll be doing the second part at some point. Uh, it is, I'm fucking. It's me, Daniel Rustage. I'm saying goodbye. Also, Evans here, and he's also saying goodbye. Bye. <laughs> and also Briggs, go check him out on his YouTube channel and on his Twitch. He actually is a Twitch streamer, actually, not a YouTuber. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you- <laughs> I use my Twitch to promote my YouTube, not vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go that's go smart. F- follow him on Twitch, Beastie Briggs, or I guess listen to his podcast as well. He has two. Yeah, the One Piece Virgin podcast, where we pretty much do s- similar stuff, where we just reminisce over One Piece, because Animac is a virgin who is just reading the series for the first time right now, and we have uh, Rank Cafe. the Rank Cafe anime. Easy. Yeah, the Rank Cafe anime podcast. Hell yeah. Well, th- thank, you. thank you, everyone, for listening to this one. Good- goodbye. Bye. Bye. Ah! You always end up with a scream. That's awesome.